one thing I think would be amiss not to mention here is the relationship to the eigenvalue decomposition. Ooh, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Eigenvalues are really awesome too. Um, how does that relate? Well, let's let's do something real quick. Let's take the matrix A. Remember, we said it's equal to U sigma V transpose. Let's say we take A transpose A. What's that give us? Well, that gives us, using the definition of singular value, if we just plug it in, take that transpose. If we do this calculation, we'll have inside here a U transpose U. It's unitary. So those would cancel out in the middle. We would end up with V sigma squared V transpose. Huh. We're getting a decomposition where we have a diagonal matrix in the middle and on the sides is the same column vectors making up a matrix and making up some kind of space. One of them is transpose of the other. Okay, that's already screaming eigenvalue. A, a transpose will do kind of similar and we'll use the property now. Again, V itself is unitary. This will give us u sigma squared, u transpose. Sigma squared, I hope you can understand, that means sigma times sigma. On the diagonals, you have the squares of the singular values. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us something really interesting about the singular values as related to the eigenvalues of each of these respective matrices. The eigenvalues of A transpose A and AA transpose, the lambda I eigenvalues are equal to the sigma I squared. Very, very cool conclusion. That's awesome. The eigenvectors of A transpose A are in the column, are in the matrix V. The eigenvectors of AA transpose are in the call are in the matrix U, and that's pretty sweet. Now, if a is equal to A transpose, that means if A is symmetric, then the eigen decomposition is identical to the SVD. Pretty sweet. 